In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God, our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, which I have ever offended you, and I have deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy innocent, sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son, that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading appointed for this 26th 22nd Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 31. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them forth from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 7. The former priests were many in, num in, in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, 
telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
we hear again from the appointed gospel reading of Mark 10. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. In the name of Jesus. Are you listened to? Jesus gives us the gift of prayer. He even told us to pray to his Father as our Father, that the Father would let his name be holy among us, in our lives, in our families. So are you heard? If you are heard, why are you heard? Because it hardly seems that the sinner should be able to presume that Holy God would hear the prayer of one who is sinful against him. When blind Bartimaeus, sitting by the side of the road, was told that Jesus was walking by, he addressed Jesus. This is prayer. Mark 10, 47. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But there were reasons for Bartimaeus not to feel confident to pray to Jesus. Bartimaeus was blind, and according to the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, if your eyes are blind, or if your ears are deaf, or if you have other afflictions in life, it's because you're unworthy. You don't stack up under the law. So the teachers of the law gave Bartimaeus reason to not think he could pray, but also the crowd. They didn't want to hear this sinner praying. Mark 10, 48. He began to cry out and say, "Son of Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked Bartimaeus, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. This is faith, praying, over against the conviction of the law that you are unworthy or unclean before God, over against the judgment of others that you don't quite stack up and maybe you should be silent, over against all doubt that God would even stoop to listen to the plea out of the mouth of a sinner, over against all of this, faith prays, Bartimaeus prays. But how did Bartimaeus know that Jesus would hear his plea? He addresses Jesus as son of David, that is, as the Christ, the one anointed to save sinners, to establish his throne of the cross, to shed the blood, to redeem sinners, to show mercy to sinners. Son of David, have mercy on me, says Bartimaeus. The sinner is saved by that. The sinner is saved by mercy, not by the law or anything the sinner does. Jesus came for mercy and grace, not for the law. In a sinful world which actually looks for more law, we might think they don't look for law because they are so much breaking God's moral law. But in our sinful world, it does look for more law because to the world of sinners, the law is the way to justify yourself. In a world that does not want to hear Bartimaeus then praying for mercy over against the law, Bartimaeus, voice of faith, prays, Son of David, have mercy on me. But would Jesus hear that plea? Mark 10, 50. And Jesus stooped and said, call him. 
And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? Jesus stands before Bartimaeus as the one who will not turn away from the prayer of the sinner, will not refuse the plea for mercy. Into this, Jesus has been anointed. That's what it means to be the son of David. David had been given the promise that his greater son would sit upon his throne and it would be an eternal throne. Bartimaeus knows that Jesus is that greater, fulfilled son of David. Jesus hears Bartimaeus' prayer for mercy because he, Jesus, is the one appointed to make intercession for the sinner. That's what it means to be the son of David. It is to be the one anointed to take the throne of the cross, to shed the blood which makes intercession for the sinner before the throne of God in heaven. Hebrews 7.25, Jesus is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. So this is what faith knows. This is what Bartimaeus knew, that the sinner approaches God the Father in confidence through Jesus. The sinner comes to God in prayer, not in any righteousness of his own, not in any worthiness under the law, but through Jesus and his righteousness. As the letter to the Hebrews puts it, Jesus is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him. Approaching God the Father through Jesus, the sinner knows, we know, that the prayer for mercy is welcomed. It is heard. It is given to our lips by Jesus himself because that is why Jesus lives, to make intercession for the sinner. Hebrews 7.25 Jesus is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For this reason, Jesus came to us. For this purpose, he was raised up from the dead for us. It is, as the letter to the Hebrews says, why Jesus lives, to make intercession for us, the sinner. He is now seated at the right hand of the throne in heaven, the eternal throne promised through David, on the throne to speak as our advocate to his father. He speaks to his father for forgiveness, for mercy for us, for grace to be given us rather than the judgment of the law. The father hears that prayer. He never refuses the intercession of his son, for that is why he sent his son. By that prayer, you are justified. You are declared innocent. The same voice of Jesus, this voice of intercession for the sinner, this voice of mercy, it is spoken here on earth so that the sinner justified in heaven at the throne hears that justification spoken here on earth in the word of gospel. What are we hearing after all when Jesus gathers us to his table? What we hear are the words he appointed to be spoken in the church. Take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood for the forgiveness of your sin. As our ears hear those words here on earth, Jesus is speaking to his Father in heaven. Father, my blood covers their sin. My blood atones for their guilt. My blood redeems them, Father, for that is why you sent me. Father, forgive them. Sins forgiven on earth are forgiven in heaven. The voice of Jesus we hear here on earth in the gospel is spoken in heaven in intercession. The sinner justified here on earth stands justified before the eternal throne in heaven so that we stand before Jesus as did Bartimaeus. No worthiness of our own, no righteousness to present, but sinners. Yet sinners praying 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus never turns away from that prayer, for he lives to make intercession for the sinner, for us and our families. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, look with mercy upon us, your children on earth. Grant us grace that your children on earth may look to you alone for every good gift. Your holy name may be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the faithful administration of your sacraments and through the fervent love of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, let your name be holy among us as it is in heaven. Grant us grace that your name may be kept holy to us by your word. Let us rejoice in the bestowal of your name in baptism. Turn away from us all false teaching, all false prayers, and all evil living. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that your kingdom may come to us and grow through the preaching of your gospel. Send your Holy Spirit to those blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom, that they would be brought to know your Son, Jesus Christ, in true faith, through the fellowship of your church, Lord, in your mercy. Break and hinder every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, and keep us steadfast in the word until we die. Grant us to be strengthened by your spirit, to do and suffer your will both in life and in death, in good and in evil. We ask your grace especially for those going through affliction, including sickness and hospitalization, especially for Jan, Laura, John, Jim, Brooks, Marianne, Shannon, Kylie, Becky, Marty, David, Don, and Rochelle, and those in serious long-term care, including Ramona, Audra, Lyle, Ted, Kaja, Wyatt, Roger, Janice, Edna, Tom, Charles, Shannon, Sean, Peggy, Sonia, Diane, Elaine, and any others that we name in our hearts. Give to all your people the faith and strength to pray, not my will, but thine be done, Lord, in your mercy. Grant us, Father, our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. Grant us good government and protect us from violence. Bless Joseph, our president, Michelle, our governor, and Timothy, our mayor, and all those given to serve to protect the innocent and the defenseless and to bring justice to those who do harm. Let life, especially the lives of the unborn, be protected and let your institutions of the marriage of man and woman, of family and home, of property and wealth be upheld by all who are given earthly authority. Help us 
to trust that you will provide for our every need so that our lives may overflow with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us, Father, our sins. Let us freely forgive those who sin against us. Root out all bitterness and hatred from the hearts of your people, that they may be filled with your mercy. Let us look upon our brothers and sisters in the church, not in condemnation, but with eyes of kindness, forgiveness, and joy. Grant us a good conscience before you, so that no sin would ever frighten or alarm us, Lord, in your mercy. Protect us, Father, in time of trial and temptation. Help us by your spirit to subdue our sinful nature, to despise the sinful world and its ways, and to overcome the devil and his deceits. Bless those who teach our children, especially the teachers and staff of Lambs of Grace Preschool, teachers throughout our Lutheran schools of this nation, and also bless especially our brothers and sisters at Christ Lutheran Church as they undergo a search for a new pastor and a call. Keep us in your church from conversations of gossip and accusation. Let our tongues speak your words of encouragement and consolation to honor our neighbor's reputation, always extolling your gifts, Lord, in your mercy. Guard and keep us, Holy Father, so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive or mislead us into false faith, despair, or other great shame and vice. Deliver us from every evil of body and soul, both now and forevermore, that we may at last leave this valley of sorrow with joy and enter into the company of your saints in light, joining in their song of praise that never ends. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, and life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. The name of Jesus be with you. The name of Jesus be with you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. Take and eat. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you. The name of Jesus be with you. The name of Jesus be with you. The name of Jesus be with you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Savior Jesus Christ, strength and preserve you in body and soul, and to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated, and we ask Nathan and Victoria Graff to please step forward. As, as they will be joining our sister congregation down in Las Cruces. Las Cruces, New Mexico, as they make plans to move there. Beloved in the Lord, in holy baptism, you became members of the Holy Christian Church. In our Lord's word and sacraments, have nourished you in this congregation for many years. As we bid you farewell, in God's speed, hear the words of the Apostle Paul. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have so faithfully nourished our brother and sister with us in the communion of this congregation. Bless protect and defend them as they now depart from us to their new home. Preserve them in the confession of your name and in loving service to others. Keep us in the fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and joy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And you may return.
bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. A few announcements in addition to what you have in the bulletin. Uh, first of all, uh, the, there's a Navajo Nation food drive. This is, we've had this for the last couple years, I think, two or three years, I'm not sure. Um, this is for the Lutheran Church at Navajo Nation, which is out by um, Gallup, New Mexico, and Pastor Tim Norton, who is serving as missionary out there. So the food drive, it starts next Sunday and it will end in mid-December, and that lets them have the, these gifts of food for, for Christmas time. So the note is, please bring donations to the Fellowship Hall, and you can find more details about the food that's needed and such uh, in your bulletin, or check with Jacob Ellis. So very good. Also, a note from the youth. The youth had their Luther Fest last evening. They did a really fine job, a great job for everyone, all the families that were able to come and providing us with food and with the cornhole tournament. I will announce that the past champions of this cornhole tournament were unable to hold off the juggernaut of the Wentz family, so they have stolen the championship. Um, but we do thank the youth. That was a great job, and it was uh, a, nice, a nice gift to us. But they do have food left over. You can guess that that's probably based on brats and things of that that they uh, provided, but the food was very good with German potato salad and other things. So they have food left over. So if you would like to check with them in the kitchen, back in the fellowship hall, um, to get some food for lunch or dinner, that would help them out. And remember, any donations that they receive, this is to help them uh, get transportation and lodging and everything for the youth um, the, the higher things, youth uh, seminars. So, and last, uh, there's a farewell reception for Nathan and Elaine. <laughs> is, is Elaine, <laughs> is, is Elaine leaving? <laughs> it's for Nathan and Victoria. I'm sorry, Victoria. <laughs> um, may, maybe Elaine will be leaving. <laughs> So, but a farewell reception for Nathan and Victoria in the Fellowship Hall as they leave for Las Cruces. I think that's it for announcements. Um, we do want to welcome any guests that we have with us. I know we have guests from, what, St. Louis, Missouri, from um, Tennessee, and maybe elsewhere. I don't remember now, but especially if you're a guest, it is an honor to be with you at the Lord's name. And if you're able, as you leave the Lord's service, um, join us for coffee and treats back in the Fellowship Hall. And if you're able, pass after that, join us for Bible class and Sunday school hour. But let us go forth in our Lord's name.